No, it's alright, this isn't a vlog. It is an anatomy video. Um, Welsh lockdown rules have changed to the point where, for the first time in 12 weeks, I went bouldering this morning, which was amazing to touch rock again. With all the strength training I'm doing, it turns out I'm strong, but my skin is like brand new born baby skin. It's soft and rubbish. Anyway, so this video is about why do my elbows hurt all the time <laughs> as a climber? Think about what rock climbers do and use what you know about the elbow joint to work out which part of my elbow always hurts. you got about six seconds. Yes, that was a very nice run, thank you very much. Um, it's that part of my elbow that hurts and we'll talk about the anatomy in a moment. Just a reminder that if you're somebody searching for information about um, golfer's elbow and how to recover from it, what I'm really doing here is using a clinical example to describe the anatomy of a region of the body and make it relevant, right? Um, I'm not a clinical doctor, I've got a PhD and I teach anatomy, so that's what we're doing here. Right. So this isn't medical advice. Um, that said, what reminded me to do this was um, Ed next door plays a bit of golf and the golf course is opened again recently. So Ed's been playing a lot of golf and as a result of playing a lot of golf, he hurt himself here. So we were exploring the anatomy here and what's caused the injury and how best to recover from it. Now his pain was muscular. My pain is tenderness. Okay, so what do we got here? I've got to see if I can find some photos of relevant anatomy things because I'm still not allowed in my lab. Oh, by the way, it looks like my building might be opening again at the end of June, so I might be allowed back into my lab to make videos using my anatomy tools. Anyway, okay, so the bone here is the humerus. These bony bits here on either side are the epicondyles of the humerus. Oh, that's really sensitive, just poking that. That's the electronon. And then in here, we have the, the radius and the ulna, the two bones here. So the pain I'm feeling is... <sighs> it's really localised around here. And what we've got here is what gets called the common flexor tendon. So what we've got here, this is the medial epicondyle of the humerus, right? Anatomical position, so... So in the anatomical position, this is medial, this is lateral. So the medial epicondyle of the humerus, this side of the forearm we have extensor muscles which extend the wrist, so extension of the wrist, extension of the fingers. And on this side, this is the flexor compartment. So the muscles here, generally speaking, flex the wrist, so flexion of the wrist, and flex the fingers. And from this common flexor tendon, many of the muscles in the flexor compartment all come from this. This is their origin point. This is their site of attachment to the medial epicondyle of the humerus. They start here and they spread towards their, their insertions, their targets. So what have we got? There are two muscles going to the wrist. The bones of the wrist are the carpus. So those two muscles going to the wrist are gonna be flexor carpi muscles. We've got one on the ulna side and one on the radial side. So we've got flexor carpi ulnaris and flexor carpi radialis running over here. And then we have um, pronator teres. So pronator is going to give this action, right? So pronation, supination, pronation, supination. Um, and then flexor digitorum superficialis, so the superficial layer of muscles that run to the digits, um, they run as far as these bones here. Flexor digitorum superficialis also comes from here. Those are the main ones, the four, but also we have um, palmaris longus. Um, a long muscle running to the palm, which not everybody has, um, you know, it's a thing. But palmaris longus also gets described as coming from the common flexor tendon. Anyway, 
So what's causing my pain then? What do climbers do? Well, we do a lot of flexion. <laughs> we do a lot of this, and we do not just when climbing, but also in training. Because we don't tend to do pull-ups like this. Uh, we tend to do pull-ups like that. They're more climbing specific. Which means that we're using these muscles to stabilise the wrist and often if particularly if you're working like with slopey holds and that sort of thing where you're trying to you're not grabbing with your fingers but you're you're grabbing with your whole hand you're using these wrist flexors quite powerfully to hold on to those things but also you're flexing your finger so there's a lot of strain put on the common flexor tendon from flexor carpi ulnaris flexor carpi radialis flexor digitorum superficialis and that often triggers long-term changes and this is what a tendinopathy is um, it's not tendinitis um, it's more of a tendinopathy and I'll come back to that in a minute okay so this pain here gets called golfer's elbow why does it get called golfer's elbow what are golfers doing are they doing a lot of a lot of that well they might be if they're not swinging too well and they're compensating with their wrists but what you do when you swing is I mean ideally you should just be hinging you should just be hinging like that right so but when you hit the ball your um, when you hit the ball with a golf club the forces want to push the wrist that away so the flexor carpi muscles are resisting um, extension of the wrist right do you see what I mean? So they're not so much not so much that they're actively flexing the wrist, as much that every time you swing and strike the ball, they're trying to keep this straight and square. So they're resisting extension. So then you get overuse again of the tendons and the muscles. In Ed's case, he tore a muscle. Muscles are really good at um, being injured. It depends on how badly injured they are, of course. But a minor tear in a muscle. Um, with a bit of rice, a bit of rice, a bit of rest, ice, compression, elevation, they heal really nicely and quite quickly. Whereas damage to tendons is is a much slower process to recovery. So that's what's going on here. That's the anatomy. Um, and while it gets called golfer's elbow, now you have a better understanding of the anatomy and how it's involved in wrist flexion. You can see how this sort of injury um, can come from people who. It's, a, it's kind of a long-term overuse issue. So people who work manually, people who work physically, often then start to develop these sorts of pains and these sorts of issues because of overuse of the muscles and the tendons. All right, so we also used to call these, these tendonitis, but now if we actually look at the pathophysiology, if we actually look at the, um, um, the extracellular matrix, the cells, the tissues, if we actually look and see with a microscope what's going on, uh, in the tendon, we don't see signs of lymph inflammation. Um, we don't see this, you know, a long-term inflammatory response. So it's not really an itis. It's not really tendonitis. What we see, generally speaking, is um, degeneration of the extracellular matrix within the tendon. So the tendon is a really highly organised um, connective tissue that's translating the forces from the muscle to the bone, and we see that the the normally very organized type 1 collagen um, fib fibrils uh, become disorganized in places and we might see more cells than we normally would we might see an increase in vascularization we see a lot of strange changes and it's not entirely understood why these things occur but it's a chronic condition so it's like a, a slow long-term degenerative thing and that's what leads to swelling and pain personally it's just pain um, it's an interesting thing. So when I was a runner, when I was a runner and a triathlete, my legs hurt all the time just because they do. They always hurt and that's normal. And it's the same moving into climbing. Like my shoulders always hurt all the time. My elbows hurt all the time and that's fine. But it's different levels of pain. So if I'm doing like a lot of fingerboard exercises, that can really exacerbate this and the pain goes up to a level which is bad pain. And then I back off and I rest. And by resting, I mean I do less. So... Um, if it's in its normal state, then I think using the muscles and the joints is a good thing. You're getting blood flow into the tendon and you're bringing all those growth factors. And, you know, a little bit of movement seems to be better than complete rest. And complete rest of uh, tendinopathy doesn't seem to be any more beneficial than um, 
they're not completely rested yet. Like I say, this isn't entirely understood. Everybody's a little bit different. The tendons around the body are a little bit different. Um, this is just what I do. I just keep going because it's the old thing, isn't it? So either you either stop or you keep going. Recovery then of this sort of thing. Um, initially, so I mean, you could have an acute injury. It's more likely to be a chronic injury. So an acute injury can be, you know, a specific event damages the tendon or a muscle. And uh, in the acute phase of recovery, again, this is just what I do, right? You tend to use um, rest, ice, compression and elevation. So um, you're trying to limit the inflammation, you use ice to cool it down, a little bit of compression, that sort of thing. Your basic first aid type stuff. But Sam, that's a really wishy-washy description of tendinopathies considering you call yourself a cell biologist. Yes, it is, but if we were to talk about it in that sort of detail, that's a whole other 20 minute video and I don't think my audience wants to know about that in this video. Anyway, right, we're done. So that's what golfer's elbow means. Those are the anatomical structures involved. Those are the movements involved. And that's how you might rest it by doing, by thinking about those movements. Um, and then I think the general advice, go, go ask a physio, don't ask me, I don't, you know, I'm my own worst enemy sometimes, but go and ask a physio and they'll probably tell you in the early stages to do rest, ice, compression and elevation, so uh, limit the inflammation in the early onset, you know, um, ice it, but then um, when, after a few days of that, you know, maybe use a little bit of heat, a little bit of movement, that sort of thing, to encourage blood flow into the tendon and help it recover. And uh, pain is your guide. Too much pain, sharp pain, like the wrong pain is bad, but the right pain is okay. <laughs> that, 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 if you understand that, that only comes with experience. Right, we're done. Um, see you later.